Thank you. No worries. It's uh, Thursday, March 28th, and you're here at the Metrics Models Working Group. Hi, everybody. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to facilitate, even though I was totally not prepared to do so. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just keep that in, in mind. Oh, who added this? Enjoy swimming. That's a good question. I don't know. It was it was there when I called in. Maybe oh. matter that. Yeah, maybe. I don't know how to swim. I'm with you, Winifred. We we had a pool in the backyard growing up too, which is ironic because I don't know how to swim. So like, <laughs> I just like sit in it. I don't know. Okay, I think there's also a bank holiday in Madrid. I saw. Uh, did Daniel post post that? Yeah, I think it's, it's a. Um, there a lot of people are out for Easter holidays. Easter, yeah, Easter okay. related holidays, which I assume is probably what the Madrid one is. In the yeah. UK, we have Good Friday and Easter Monday. Got you. Got you. Got you. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have a couple of candidates for new metrics models. Let's look at these sustaining contributors. Looks like these have had a lot of work in them from August. Yay. I don't remember this at all, but apparently I worked on it. <laughs> I didn't shot any Yuhui. Yuhui, do you remember this? Uh, actually, actually, might leave us some message that he he put some old uh, metrics model should be should be pay some attention on that. So it looks like happened like half a year ago. Yeah. So what it's do we want to work on this? Like take some time in this meeting and work on it? How are how are we feeling with our brain power today? <laughs> I know Don mentioned kind of not yeah, having it. <laughs> yeah, I I I am thinking I, I'm thinking Matt just wanna want us to refresh the status of, of this matrix model if we have some progress on that. Or oh, and uh, I think um, we have some discussion about the post, uh, contributor personnel uh, several months ago. I think they have some connections with each other. Uh, and uh, and after we discussed this metrics model, like f half a year ago, and, and uh, I post the idea about uh, personnel. Now, I think we can continue our discussion about personnel after that. I can bring it up in the, in the next meeting, anyway. Okay. I think that sounds excellent. Yeah, and personally, I'd like to I'd like to rename this one because uh, uh -huh. contributor sustainability. Um, uh, I've tended to use it as as something else, like basically it's highly related to the bus factor, which isn't in this. And reading through the why it matters, I don't think that this is really really as much about sustainability as it is being um creating think, a welcoming environment. I'm not sure contributor retention's right either. I don't know. Naming's hard as as you can see from the bus factor uh discussions <laughs> in yeah, I chimed in about 5 minutes ago on that too. So yeah. there's, there's a lot of feels. Oh, um, naming's hard. So it hard. It's hard. It really is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this uh it's almost like like welcomingness kind of. I don't yeah. know. We have a model called that, um, that isn't on the website and that is a disaster. Yeah, uh, what happened with that? Maybe we should look at that <sighs> or not. <laughs> we can also, um, starter viability is not on the website. Mm -mm. It, it's never made its way to the website. Oh, that's weird. I don't uh, know why. Oh. Is this what we're talking about? Yeah, go to go to metrics and all metrics models. Mm, metrics, all metrics models. It's not on this page. That's okay. where I'm looking for it. And that's why I didn't think it was on the website. Okay, oh, so man. it just missed this category. Okay. And this is this is also where welcomingness is missed. So maybe it is on the website and I just can't find it. Let me um just do an uh 
Yeah, maybe that's the problem with welcomingness too. Maybe it is there. We can easily find it maybe. Let's see if we go oh, here. If you search for it, yeah. Nope. Oh, oh, I was talking about someone. That's nice. Um, but that's not the model. So um, where is welcomingness? Okay. Yeah, I will track that down. It's kind of been hanging out there for a while. I know that that was brought up. Yeah. Okay. Have you noticed any other ones, anybody? That you went to reference and did not show up? For some reason? Those are the only ones I've noticed. Okay. Okay, so for sustaining contributors, Yuhui is going to bring bring up what we, what did you call that personnel? Yuhui? Yeah, Something? personnel. I uh, we actually uh, discussed it a little bit. Uh, yeah. I, I remember two two times. Maybe we can finalize that. Okay, we'll talk about that next time. Next. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, let's look at project decline. Ooh. Well, there's a lot of metrics in here. Okay. 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 You may, uh, it might mean projects activity declines or what kind of things declines? It seems like. I, I'm, I want to float the idea of like, I think sometimes metrics models fall flat when they have a connotation either positive or negative associated with them. Like mm -hmm. generally a metric is trying or, or generally in the metrics that I've found, we're trying to use language that is neutral rather than saying this is a measure of how good a project is or this is a measure of how bad a project is. It's like this is one thing that you can observe about a project and based on the trend of this particular metric, you may or may not see that it's going well or it's not going well, right? Like it, it matter. Context really matters, and I think uh, being able to show a metrics model like project decline is just automatically a negative um, connotation. Uh, it, in the same way that you wouldn't say project success is a good metric model name. Uh, I just worry about using decline as like the first. Uh, introduction to this model. I also think that this is entirely too broad. Um, I mean, there are about any metric you could look at could signal decline or, um, I don't know, increase. Success. <laughs> Success, whatever. Yeah. I feel like, I, I don't, yeah, I feel like this is, I feel like this is too broad. I'm not sure what we're going to accomplish with this. Yeah, like I, I want to dig into some of the ideas that are here because they feel reflective of what you might look at for lean, agile development in um, open source, but with no guidance of like what exactly it's trying to measure, maybe cycle time, maybe contributor attention, you know, like I think by itself, it, it's, it's, it is a bit big. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this anyway. also relates to uh, Remy's maturity model. Like maybe we could attach it to that somehow. Of like, this is how you know when your project is reaching this level of maturity or in the, you know, the life cycle of a project. Because I think that's what um, we're trying to do here is just indicate that 
there's there's a change in maturity or or status or you know that the the project is evolving now and it's it's at this level okay you you mean you define the life cycle status of of the project right yeah like this seems like so if you have a life cycle of a project <clears throat> this is showing <clears throat> like okay if you get to this trend you see this trend happening then it may indicate that the project like he says here is is reaching end of life or maybe it's um you know just stabilizing like um uh but it's like you said gary like it it does seem bad when it might be just the natural life cycle of a project and that's okay sure. but it would be an indicator that okay now we're now this project is hitting this maturity level It's trick on me to start thinking that uh, uh, the current working on the ISO standard definition part. Uh, actually, we define the different level of, of the ISO standard to make it easy to to make people uh, stand from the different aspect or multiple aspect to looking for the health of the community. And uh, all these aspects uh, combined together Maybe it um, could be equally say that uh, it uh, have achieved some status of the maturity, but we cannot give the uh you know a single you know single number uh to say okay when when they achieve this number and uh, it achieve some some kind of maturity level, and okay. it's it's very difficult. Yeah, and I, I'm struggling here because I can see what the intention is, is to like see whether or not basically there's a sustainable machine maintaining the project. Almost feels like what we're looking at here. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's supposed to indicate that there's an issue that either, you know, they need more resources or it's just time to yeah. say goodbye. Like that's the thing that we're trying to show. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with this. I'm not sure either. Well, maybe we. What, uh, is, the, what is the last comments made by someone else, or, or, or it's only created by Matt, and uh, there's no discussion yet? Or? Yeah, it looks like just Matt. Okay. Maybe we can discuss with him through the slide again. So yeah. made made for the decision. Okay. That makes sense. Because he may have additional context that he didn't drop in here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. <laughs> what else on the agenda? But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, Elizabeth, I noticed that, uh, uh, Dawn and you, uh, including the Gary, uh, uh, didn't have chance, got a chance to attend the, the meeting we held in the last two times. Uh, we have, uh, some discussion about ISO standard. Do you want to hear something about those or, uh, we can, we can discuss it after, uh, uh, you know, in the next meeting anyway. I'm happy to take a few minutes to discuss it, sure. Yeah, I wouldn't mind an update on that yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before I, 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 actually I would like to share uh, my screen, but before I share it, uh, that's one question. I, I know that, uh, uh, 
North American uh, or suppose uh, you know open source summit will be held in the next month, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so in the middle of next month, or I I can't quite I can't remember the time. It's Oh. April fourteenth through seventeenth or something. That whole Yeah, week. we're Okay. we're canceling all of the uh chaos meetings. We should probably put that on the agenda. Elizabeth will be the yes, we should. <laughs> okay. We're calling it we're calling it the chaos. What what was it you called it? The spring slash fall break, depending Yes. on whether you're in the northern or southern hemisphere. But actually our next metrics model meeting will be the week before that, anyways. Okay. So because in the last meeting, uh uh Professor Professor uh Minghui Zhou from Peking University just is sharing some thinking about ISO standard structure and doing some uh you know a literature review process. And uh, he also she's also leading uh, uh her two doctor students working on those things. So Matt just mentioned that after the summit, uh, during this summit, uh, he will got chance uh, to discuss with uh, with uh, uh, some people from Linux Foundation to get get more feedback and uh, and information about the, the procedure uh, procedure of the creating ISO standard. So uh, we are also waiting for that response and feedback. But anyway, I I can share my screen and to quick. Go quick, go through quickly about the whole structure. Oh, wow. So, Yahoo, your graphic yeah. always looks so lovely. <laughs> They're always so pretty, your graphics. I love them. That is, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Anyway, I, I use actually I use this man map to describe the whole structure of the ISO standard uh, about the, the the thinking, and uh, we actually we go through this structure in the last two meetings, and uh, first uh, we would like to to go uh, to to create the, the whole structure of the about ISO standard. The thinking behind this uh, is that uh, when people looking at this structure of the ISO standard, no matter they have a background of open source governance or not, they could quickly go uh, understand what we are talking about uh, from the context directly. And uh, so, so at the very first level, we told them what we should care about, about, uh, I mean, the project fields. So the three aspect from the community aspect, software and the value created by the community and the software, these three things. So in the next level, uh, actually we have three, uh, four, another uh, sub level activity. Actually this name is not so good, but uh, what we want to show and tell people that the current snapshot, I mean, the current status of the community quickly go through that uh, to, to give them the quickly, uh, the general view of the whole community. And then we could tell them how about the open governance uh, uh, created by this community or project. And uh, we more care about collaboration happened to uh, in this community to see how they going about collaboration between the different organizations and the individual people. And then the last one is uh, the some basic uh, infrastructure support. Uh, uh, so we call it infrastructure complete needs. So for the software, I'm, uh, sorry. I'm sorry, Uh, Yuhui. Uh, how, what you mentioned yeah, please. that this was regarding the ISO standard. I'm looking at this mind map Sorry. and trying to connect how this maps the ISO standard. Uh, so, About ISO standard, no, this is not absolutely not the ISO standard. This is Oh, the okay. structure So. of ISO standard. We we plan to do so. Okay. So, so, and uh, so how the detail the content uh, in the ISO standard we are, we haven't started it yet. We just want to start our structure uh, discussion and to see how to how to create the whole structure of the ISO standard. So. 
then we can we can uh, go through the detailed things one by one after we decide or create the whole structure. That's that's the uh, our plan. Yeah, and this about software. You know, every every project and the community they will pro produce the their software artifact by the community. So. No matter we say how healthy how healthy of the community, how successful uh, uh this community is, uh, you know, we always to thinking for what kind of project uh, product product uh, produced by this community. So the next uh, things is it's about software. Software we care about the two things about the quality of software because uh, you know. They all they already exist the uh, ISO standard about two five one zero one, uh, to cover the different aspect. So we don't have to pay too much effort on those things. So we already have some uh, clear definition about this part. Of course, for the different kind of um project, I mean the uh, software produced by some different industrial areas. They may have the different focus, but anyway, so we don't have to create it by ourselves for the for the quality things. But of but uh, I have to mention that in in our, uh, in the open source we have some uh, special focus area, especially for the security and the compliance. So uh, these two things we may add some extra extra attention and give some more uh you know uh definitions about specific uh, specifically for the open source and the, the next thing about software is uh computer needs uh actually they we i i divided into three type of companies the first is the general technical companies the, the next is the technical differentiation companies you know, for the similar product, they should provide some common or basic uh, 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 capabilities in, in this product. So we call it general. And uh, for the each of single products, they have to provide some, uh, you know, uh, to differentiate uh, 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 advantages. So I simply to, uh, to divide it into the three part, two parts. The final one is about value created by the community and the software. So awareness, adoptions, and reputations. Awareness about people who are aware of this community and software. Adoptions is the users who actually adopt the software. And reputation we observed from the partners, contributors, and users. And also we uh, mentioned some, uh, this is a very, you know, uh, undecided uh, discussion about market user values, capital values, but we haven't decided yet. So, so this is the the first two level of the ISO standard. Uh, so if we uh, click thing up, so they have more thing uh, things about, but uh, it really depends on uh, today's discussion because I just want to go quickly uh, go through the whole structure with uh, with you guys. So in the next things, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Professor Packing, uh, Professor Minghui, Zhou, and together with my attention and Daniel, we are working on the literature review to give them the fully support to tell people why we gave the those structures of the ISO standard, and uh, we have to pro uh, provide uh, some uh, you know confidential uh, from the. Uh, from the literature uh, view and also from the industry views. So we start from the literature review uh, aspect. Yeah, any comments? Um, yeah, we, uh, I have a question. Uh, when sure. I'm doing a uh, literature review, I found uh there are uh, two uh sub uh sub level of 
uh, community governance and uh, technical governance uh, that is uh, com uh, organizational structure and the technical structure. And uh, I wonder uh, what's the difference between them, between the two structures. Uh, organization structures for the community governance, it means, you know, uh, like chaos, we have a clearly defined uh, definition of the uh, uh, the whole uh, governance uh, uh, structures about how to create this board, uh, how to create this board uh, structure and and working group, and also maybe we have some cross uh, cross uh, collaborations uh, team, and uh, about technic uh, technical structure uh, competitiveness, uh, it's uh, it's also about the uh, organizations, but it's mainly focused on the you know. For some development uh, levels, it's like, uh, uh, do we need to create a container? Um, sorry, maintainers, committers, and some other technical lead. So the whole thing is in the technical governance. It's all about how to making a, a, a wonderful uh, product uh, stand from a technical view. So to support this purpose, we uh, set up a, a, a technical a technical structure. But uh, from this side, they would give higher level uh, structure view. Uh, but anyway, the community governance will take the uh, the highest control of the the whole community. So we also uh, we already have some you know, the final decision making by this community governance. Uh, so finally, so I don't know if I explain clearly. Um, so the um, decision making me mechanism is uh, made by the community governance uh, the people in in community uh, organi organizational structure, right? Yeah, the decision related to the community, the things even uh, you know all the discussion, all the technical discussion will be made uh, and the decisions will be made by the technical governance here. But uh, the some 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 other levels, uh, high levels uh, governance about the communities, and uh, it will be decided by this organization structure. Mm. Um, could you give me an example uh, about the uh, decision of uh, organizational structure? Uh, uh uh, to say the vision and mission of the whole communities, it should be defined by the community level. And, and about uh, the, the version planning, uh, and uh, if we should, um, uh, you know, to release a new feature in the next release, so this kind of decision should be made by uh, the technical governance. This is totally two things. Okay, I see. Thank you. I almost see technical governance as a as a subset of overall governance. Exactly, that's true. So yeah, that's usually, that's usually what it works is you've got kind of an overall governance for the project, and I've I've never seen it broken down by community versus versus technical. Um, yeah. There's there's usually just governance of the project. Um, I've I've not seen it called community governance, but I it's usually yeah. Just that's like, that's maybe the really a bad name, but uh, <laughs> I just want to share as as the same thinking about you. Uh, yeah. Technical governance should belong to the uh, com com community governance, but uh, you know in some scenarios we just want to dis distinguish these two things because uh, all the technical discussions should be you know finished and end in, in these areas. We don't want to involve too much people who have no, you know, technical background, but they do have a, you know, uh, some high level uh, role in the community to make any decisions related to the technical things. So I could give you an example. So the the Kubernetes steering committee, for example, is is the governance for the community for the Kubernetes community. They delegate mm -hmm. the technical decisions. So the technical decisions happen in special interest groups. So they are, so they they delegate the technical decision making to other groups 
that are accountable to the steering committee so that as as these steer, you know these special interest groups and and working groups there's some other other things along with that if there's if there's disagreement between those two groups whether it's a technical disagreement or a non you know a, a, a other type of disagreement those can get elevated dealt sorry those can get elevated to the steering committee so mm -hmm. so that's that's the way i see it in in the projects that i work in it's it's mm -hmm. usually there's there's governance and then the technical decisions are delegated to some body that exists mm -hmm. as a subset of the yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, I so I don't see community governance and technical governance as being like together the way you the way you have them. I see the technical governance as a subset of the overall governance. Something like this, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite open on that. Actually, I just wanna mention something. Uh I think we we should um, you know, thinking about these things, but uh uh, if they are standing in the same level or this one should belong to this as a sub level, I'm totally okay about that. So uh, I, I, I as our first two discussion about ISO standard, uh, we both agree that uh, it's, uh, we have to list out the, the, the areas or aspect, no matter uh, it should be in this which level, but we list here. And finally, we we can reorganize uh, to make it perfect as a as a new structure. So we accept it, you know, uh, the suggestions and agree about this part. And uh, and actually in the slide, uh, I, I mentioned that uh, we could use my uh, mind map to to discuss the our structure, but uh, the the software I I'm using is not public or international uh, application. So maybe uh, I saw Mirror just mention some other application to support online edit, um, uh, for the mind master um so sorry mind mind map. Maybe I can I can try this one and move it. It's an online version. Yeah, I've used I've used Miro before. It works pretty well for collaboration, but I'm I'm mm -hmm. not sure. I think it. I think you have to. Do you have to pay for it? I think maybe. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. I don't remember how it works. We had a we had a license for it when I worked at VMware. But anyway, I, I can try, I can find one uh, to make it more you know, easy for us working together on this mm -hmm. file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some other comments or maybe we can discuss in the next meeting. I think this is great. Really, it's mm -hmm. a lot of it's a lot of work here. Okay. It's awesome, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I'm just trying to you know uh, add everything uh, related to the uh, community chaos here, uh, give them a structure, ideas. But um, uh, I would like to work in all of you to to make it. No, as a final question. So Max also mentioned how to how to write down a real ISO standard content. He needs got some feedback from the this foundation. So that's why I'm asking when the North American Open Source Summit held. Cool. Thank you, Yuhui. This is great. So I stop sharing.
I don't think we had anything left on our agenda, did we? Let me look here. No. Um, I think that was it. Uh, we have like 11 minutes. Is there anything else we want to talk about? I'm happy to also give 11 minutes back to y'all. Well, actually, I missed the two Asia, Asia Pacific meeting held by uh, uh, our new friend. I, I Sorry, I can't remember his, her name, but uh, yeah, Divya. Divya so, Mohan. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So yeah, she's great. Going? I work with her on some Kubernetes and CNCF stuff. Okay. It's a, it's usually held uh, in China, in China time. It's held uh, the morning the morning time. It's usually my busy time, and uh, because it's working working time. So so I missed all the two 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 meetings, but in the next meeting I, I will try to attend that. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> I think Divya is open to <clears throat> excuse me. I think she's open to changing things. Like it was just kind of like we have to start somewhere. She mm -hmm. and I had talked about like it's it's really hard to find a good time for people because just like you said, Yuhui, some people prefer the day, but others prefer like after work, like in the evening or okay. early morning. Okay. So. Um, but yeah, definitely chat with her in the Chaos Asia channel, and y'all can find a great time to to adjust and and figure mm -hmm. that out. I think she's super open. Yeah, she's yeah, very yeah, yeah. I, I have some chat with with her. It's quite nice. Good. All right. Well, let's go ahead and close the meeting out then, since we're all good and wonderful. And we will mm -hmm. see everybody here in two weeks. See you. Good one, everybody. Nice Bye. Everybody. Yep. Bye.